into the game, which the CSG is right here, and you can add and subtract. Add would be able add material in, material in like this. Now, if we if we have this right here, and we click the spawn button, it's not going to be able to put you s to spawn the player in because we don't have a player start. So if you right click on the top of this right here, and you go to add actor, and you add a player start you'll get this little thing right here and then we can go and we can spawn into the game unfortunately though we can't see anything and this is because if you notice we're in unlit mode so if we switch over to lit mode we still can't see anything and this is because we have no lighting in the entire level so there's multiple ways to add a, add a light but if you want to add like a quick temporary work like work, work work light you can hold down control press L and then click and you'll get a light now you have to click on the light because it'll select the uh, actual BSP brush whenever you do this um, do the hotkeys so just be in mind of that now for some reason my default light is a different color but if you press F4 you can actually I'll show you this if you expand light, light component, and then point light component, you can change the um, radius. You can change the color, so we can change this to like a, a nice white light. Which, it didn't save, so let me try that again. You gotta make sure you click OK. There we go. And you can have all these different uh, things you can that you can change and then the shadow color and and shadow resolutions and stuff. And I'll get into more of this later on in a light tutorial. Um we're just want to set up a basic light right now. So if we spawn in you still don't have any light and this is because we have to rebuild our lighting. This is giving us a preview. However, the game itself isn't going to be able to fully be able to calculate it unless you purposely tell it to. So if we go here to build all, we'll tell the game to build the geometry right here as well as the lighting. Because it has to rebuild the ge to build the geometry to tell the game that there's actually something there. So you get this swarm thing that pops up and whatnot, but that's fine. If you open this up here, you look down, and here's our little platform. But if you notice, it's extremely tiny. So we're going to want a little bit something a little bit bigger to be able to run around on. And the current units for this is, well, actually, it's 256 by 256 by 256. Um, but if you, and I'll go ahead and show you this. This red builder brush right here, you can change the shape of if you click these different shapes right here. So, if I were to click one of these and click add, it would add material in that specific shape. Um, and, and you can right click any of these to get properties to be able to change the size of it. But if I go over here and I click the cube, I have already preset um, some properties in here. So 5,000 by 5,000 by 5,000, and a wall thickness of 20, and it's hollow. And what this will allow us to do is create a very, very large room in order to um, work with and, and make stuff in and, and all kinds of, of that stuff. So... And the reason I set it to hollow is because whenever you add CSG and it's not hollow, it, it fills in the entire area to create walls and stuff, which is what you typically want to use this with because static meshes um, are cheaper in memory. So if you use your entire level making these, the, C uh, the CSG brushes, 
it, it's your 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 game might crash or it'll take a long time to load because they use up a lot of memory. Um, but they're very good for creating quick buildings and things before you have all your static meshes in. So if if you notice, we have two lines here instead of one. The um, material is filled in here, and then if you go inside here, you have actually you ha you'll have a, a an outside cube and an inside cube. Material is filled from the outside to the inside, but the inside is left hollow. So all the faces will be filled in, but the middle will not be filled in. That's how that works. And if you change, I'll open this back up and I'll show you a hundred wall thickness. You'll get something like this, and you'll have very thick walls. And it's actually in every direction, so it keeps it the aspect ratio. And then you, if you do one, you'll have almost nothing at all. The smallest you can do is this. You can't go any smaller. If you try to go smaller than that, it'll just put it at zero, which will mean the, the equivalent of unchecking this. Unchecking this and putting this at zero is the same thing. So, just uh, keep that in mind. And then I can, I'm going to set this to about uh, 20, like it was. And then I'm going to click Build. And I'm going to exit that, and I'm going to click CSG Add. So, now that we actually have a light, it, it automatically switched us to Lit Mode. If we go in here you'll see here's our little section but we still can't see the walls so we have to increase our light size we could add a bunch more lights but in my opinion it's just easier to um, create to just increase the size of one light um, until you actually go about creating the actual lighting for your level so the radius for this light I'll just set to 5000 which is the size of our room and that'll be the whole circumference of the circle so now we have this huge thing and the shadows is actually being caused on the ground right here because of this cube that's here which we did never delete well it, it's it's gone now I guess it recalculated itself but if we um, go into wireframe mode here we can hit delete and it'll get rid of that and we're going to and it's still there because we have to recalculate our lighting or and also our geometry for it to uh, go away and if we move our spawn point down now we don't have to move our spawn point down but if we didn't we would actually start and we would fall until we hit the ground so where your, your player will literally spawn right where this is and wherever the arrow is facing is where you're gonna spawn so if we were to rotate this we would spawn facing different directions. Wherever that arrow is pointing is where you're going to be facing. So that gives you a good idea of the actual spawn of the player. Alright. So now we're going to... I'm going to recalculate everything. And you're going to get your swarm agent pulling up and it's going to take a little longer because there's more lighting data for it to run it's going to run its light mass thing and there's actually a volume that you you need to add to your game so that it uh, properly um, gets realistic shadow shadowing and what this is is in the volume section because the volumes has to do with the red builder brush. The red builder brush will place these volumes. And there's all kinds of different ones. And they're useful in, in, in your game. So you, you'll be using the volumes a lot. And the light mass importance volume will tell the level exactly where the lighting data is supposed to go. Um, otherwise, it's trying to run the whole level through this lighting process. So it basically prioritizes the lighting and where it's supposed to where it's supposed to um, calculate and also helps it calculate more efficiently so you get more efficient shadowing which we're going to um, I'll show you the before and after 
um, which is why I'm letting this run without um, the light mass importance volume. So here's your shadowing. This is what it's going to look like in game. And I'll just go in game right here and show you. And see if you notice we actually fell a little bit because our um, spawn point isn't positioned perfectly on the ground. So you look around, you've got this huge tall building and um, you know, all just corners are dark and realistic. And the light seems to be coming just from you know, the center of the room. There's no actual like light bulb floating in the sky, which is how these lights work. All lights in UDK are going to work like that. And I'll show you later on how, after we start setting up the lighting, how to um, get them to look like they're coming from a single point. But uh, for right now, we're just going to stick with this. I don't want to get too off topic here, which I tend to do. Um, now, what, what we're going to want to do here, and then we'll be done, is um, add a light mass importance volume while we've got the red builder brush right on the um, our other brush because you want to um, if, if you notice there is no um, blue thing because the red builder brush is right on top of it so while we have yet to change where the position of this is we're going to add a light mass importance volume so that we don't have to line this back up again so if you right click here on the volumes you've got all kinds of things a blocking volume would be used to like like if you were to place that somewhere the person the player would not be able to go through that section where that is even though there's nothing there so you can basically make air um, solid or something and all these different things dynamic blocking which we can move physics environment stuff you've got um, gravity proc building um, post-processing and a lot of this I'll talk about later. I don't want to get off topic again. Which the one we're going to need is right light mass importance volume right here. So it'll place that, and what you'll get is a little yellow line. And it's going to actually be hollow like the builder brush, so we don't want that. So we're going to delete that. I forgot about that. We switch to wireframe so we can line this back up. We'll just line that back up. And then we'll go up here and make the brush not be hollow. And it'll be lined up on the left side, which we're going to want. So then we can go to the volumes. And you can left click or right click, it doesn't matter. And click light mass importance volume. And then you're going to get that yellow line right there. So then we can go in again and you'll have to rebuild your lighting after you've done this for you to get the effect but I want to show you here's what the lighting looks like now and if we rebuild the lighting we don't have to rebuild all we can just rebuild the lighting because we didn't mess with anything but the lighting so we don't actually have to rebuild everything it'll first of all it'll um, process much quicker you won't see much of a difference right now, but uh, whenever you start building big enough maps where it's taking hours, you'll see a big improvement in the lighting um, speed. It won't go too fast right now because there's not it'll there's not um, that much for it to affect. But um, I've I have heard of people taking sometimes 12 hours to process an entire map with light mass and it would take almost twice that without it so you do want to make sure you have one of these volumes in your levels so once it finishes emitting all these protons that's what it's doing right now is emitting protons oh wait no not protons, photons. It's processing the mappings, my bad. I get confused sometimes because those are right there, but the... Okay. And now you can see 
the difference. It's it's a very very big difference, and it and I I'm not selected. That's what it looks like selected. So I I I'm not selecting anything. I'm gonna go off here and click into the distance. And this is just because it bounces the light around. That's what light mass does. It takes and bounces the light around like in realistic shadowing. So it looks realistic. It'll it'll look more realistic and it'll look less like the lights coming from everywhere and more just like there's just the rooms just lit just somehow instead of there being a specific source you can't really determine the source um, in a room like this and uh, this is mostly because I think my lighting reverted to oh yeah the brightness is set too low that's why my um my color is yellow but it's it's way too low so if I set this to like one there we go So now you can see it's. And we would have to re redo the lighting again for this because I did the brightness again. So I'll just I'll quickly do that, and um, I'll show you what it looks like in game. And that'll be it for this tutorial. Um, I do appreciate suggestions on how I could do better in any way and any questions that you have do do ask the um, next tutorial will be on adding textures and creating um, some windows and things and some doorways using subtraction um, subtractive properties from the BSP so once this uh, finishes well, I'll actually pause the recording real quick Okay, so here's what it looks like now. And if I go into the level, this is what it looks like. So, you do have to take into account that light's going to be bounced around and it's going to appear much brighter um, after you've processed your lighting. And so, in some cases, you kind of don't want to have a light volume. Because um, if, if I go in here and I were to change the brightness again, it would this looks a lot different than the other and this is before it's bounced the lighting around this is just the lighting actually hitting the tops of this so you you, you get a whole different effect and so sometimes you don't actually want to put a light mass volume if you don't want that realistic shadowing you know if, if you want something to look like this that's fine but um, a, a lot of times you're gonna want to put that there um, and in a room like this it it um, actually doesn't work as well because it's just completely open and you don't have things to block the shadows um, but typically you're going to want to have one of those but I'm going to go ahead and stop, stop this now and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial